Hi everyone, John here. Welcome back to another Topo Talk. This example comes from the 3D Modeling Discord. And the question was whether this topology could be improved. And while it's okay topology, there is a triangle here and a pole. Neither of those really matter because these are on a flat surface, so it would render okay. But it got me thinking about a more efficient way to create this. So I thought we'd give that a go. So first of all, I'm just going to shift right click and select the 3D cursor and just center it over that little dot there. That's pretty close to being centered. Let me just zoom in a bit and get that centered. Because of course, when I press Shift A to create a new mesh circle, that will be centered at the 3D cursor. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to set vertices to 16 and fill type to triangle fan and just going to go into x-ray mode there and just click and drag the radius and hold down shift so I can get small increments and just scale it up so that the right hand side is kind of lining up with this outer edge just like that okay so shift space so I can see the wireframe tab into edit mode I to inset and once more inset just like that okay so what I want to do is move these vertices out into place to create this shape but of course I don't want to go and do it one by one you could try using proportional editing but that tends to pull in the other vertices as well I'm used to cinema 4d where there's the brush tool and the grab tool and also the magnet tool and you can have them work just on selected vertices and I kind of miss that in Blender. If you know of a way to do that in Blender, then please let me know. But as far as I can tell, the only way that we can do it is to use sculpting. So I'm going to hit three, go into face mode and select that ring of faces. Actually, before we do that, what I might do is just select these ones here and delete these and now select these okay so come up into sculpt mode and in sculpt mode under face sets I'm going to choose face set from edit mode selection and under brush just ensure that face sets and face set boundaries are selected okay so what I can do now is just use my brush I can hit F and scale that brush up I have the grab tool selected, so I can just click and drag and drag these out. I can probably just make that brush a bit bigger. So this is something I used to do a lot in Cinema 4D with the brush tool and the magnet tool, and also the grab tool in sculpting. It's a little bit faster than, than selecting individual vertices. that one in there and take that one up there like that now it's hard to tell whether it's really hugging that shape so what we'll do is we'll add a subdivision surface and you can see how that's stretching out that ring this is how it looks under subdivision but grabbing it isn't changing that if we just turn off the subdivision surface you can see we haven't actually affected the position of those verts it's just because it's under subdivision it's smoothing it out so I'm not worried about that at the moment. All I'm interested in is just making sure that these edges line up. And I might just take the levels view to two and just bring these up into place like that. So see how I can move that vert on the outer edge and not affect these ones here. That's why it's so good to use the sculpt tools for this kind of thing. Now I've only used 16 loops on the on the ring you could use more if you want it to be even tighter in here but I thought 16 was enough when I was practicing this shape maybe something like that so it's nice to use this kind of organic workflow when you're doing hard surface okay so something like that right so that looks pretty good let's go back into edit mode Okay, and what we can do now is select all 
and we'll extrude this. So E, C, Z. Let's extrude that up. And we'll just select this ring here and do the same. E, C, Z, like that. And next what we'll do is we'll go into the select menu and choose select sharp edges. Let me just deselect everything and try that again. So we'll go select, select sharp edges, that's better. Okay. So you just need to adjust the sharpness level to make sure that you've only got the correct edges selected. Control B to bevel. And I've already got mine set up with a shape of one. So if you haven't, just hold down the P key and you can change that on the fly. I'm just dragging it all the way to the right. Hit A again, then I can adjust the size of that. You can see it's a little bit pinchy there, so if I just deselect loop slide, that fixes that. Okay, so tab now, and you can see we haven't messed up that perfect ring shape. Just right click and choose Shade Smooth. that looks pretty good. One thing we can do though, we've got quite big polygons here and tight ones in there. So what we could do is we could press Control R, roll the mouse wheel and just put three cuts in there like that. And that's making this even tighter in here. So you might be wondering what I'm doing. What I'm going to do is just hit one and auto merge vertices is active. So making sure that vertex snapping is selected. Just click on a vert, make sure that you've got tweak mode selected. Click, hold down control and snap, and that will merge those together. So you want those ones, and we want this one and this one. Might just turn that off now. Select that one and that one. Control X to dissolve. Alt click, Alt click, Control X. These are overlapping just slightly, but that's okay going to grab that one GG just to slide that out and EG. We're just making the mesh a little more uniform and that will help with the tension when this is under subdivision. And let's go back into top view like that. All right, so I think that's a better way to create something like that. Let me just turn that off again. You can see it's a bit of a mess around here. It's probably pretty much the same polygon count, but overall I think that's a fairly good way to approach that. And I wanted to show you that technique where you can freeze the face sets in sculpt mode and then use the grab tool to move your verts around a little more easily. It's definitely a faster way of working. Okay, so that's it for now. If you have any questions, leave a comment and I'll see you in the next tutorial.